Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Derek Wright and welcome to another unannounced live stream. Today we're going to be... Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Derek Wright and welcome... And we're going to stop the feedback there. And we're going to be talking about a, an exciting topic. At least I think it's exciting. Um, and that is the topic of using a descant horn, a triple horn or a double horn when you get when you get assigned to play pieces from classical and baroque composers um, for those of you who have taken auditions especially first horn auditions you'll know that one of the pieces that comes up often is the trio from Bach's first Brandenburg concerto so first Let's talk about the reasons why many people choose to play high horns. And let's talk about why I think you should choose to play high horn. Um, it's a lot of times just about safety. People hear that a shorter horn makes it easier to play higher notes. However, Really, that's not the case a lot of the time. If you're struggling, I'll tell you right now, if you're struggling to play the notes on a high piece of music, especially Bach's Brandenburg Concerto, on your double horn, having a descant horn or a triple horn is not going to help you hit those notes. Now it is true that playing high notes on those horns provides more of a sense of security because the shorter horn has much bigger harmonics when you're playing high notes. So you don't feel like other notes are quite as close to slip into. But aside from that feeling of security, if you can't play the notes, it's not going to help. And really, and I've heard this from everyone who's master the high register you can play the notes just as easily on the double as you can on a descant or triple Miss C was a Derrick error, not a horn error. Now, that was a double horn. That was an Engelbert Schmid double horn that we have on sale at the shop, by the way, in case you're interested. Uh, here is the same passage played on a descant horn. I guess that high upside needs to be tuned down a little bit, but you can get the gist of the, I didn't have trouble playing it on the double and playing it on the descant didn't make it easier, but there is something that the descant did. And I was able to play lighter and with a more transparent quality on the descant horn than I was on the double horn. And the point I want to make to you today is that choosing to play a double descant or triple horn on any certain piece shouldn't be about wanting to hit the notes. And it should be about the art. This is where security does help the art because if you feel more secure, you will be more free to express yourself and to 
play around with the phrasing and make the piece your own. But also, the shorter horn does have a different tone quality than the longer horn. And that tone does allow you to get a more characteristic sound, sound more like Bach, what Bach intended, or at least as far as what we think we know Bach intended. By the way, I am looking over at chat. Um, I know it's a bit of a late live stream today, but if you have any questions or concerns, <laughs> or if you just want to chat about anything related to horn, just um, put it there and let me know and I'll be sure to get to it. So that's the reason to use a triple horn. So that's the reason why you would use a descant horn or a double horn. A more characteristic sound that helps to evoke the feeling of Bach a bit more. So where does a triple horn fall into this? I'm going to play um, the Brandenburg Trio again on the descant, and I'm going to move to a triple. By the way, the descant horn I'm playing is a used Paxman 40M that we also have at the shop and available for sale for $48.95 in case anyone's interested. And the triple I'm playing is a uh, Dieter Otto triple horn, um, also available for sale. Forgot for a moment there that this horn is sitting in F. Um, so I had to actually put down the B flat horn for a B flat and then go up to the high F horn. So you can tell, although the high F horn on the triple had, had a light and bouncy quality, the descant was still a bit more transparent and a bit more characteristic. Now, the high F horn on both instruments is the same length. But what's a, what occurs, what's accounting for the difference in tone is the weight of the horn. And yes, the weight of the horn does matter a lot to the sound that it produces. The heavier triple lends itself to a heavier sound. And that's good if you're using a triple because the reason why you would use a triple so that you don't have to carry a double and a descant. If you go to an audition, a high horn audition, and you choose to use a high F horn, then you're gonna have to take your double and your descant with you. But you can learn to play a triple, not switch between horns, and just become comfortable on one instrument that has all of those horns combined. But you do lose some of the some of the bounciness, some of the, um, some of the lightness that you would get if you're using the lighter descant horn. Now, that does lend itself to the use of the high F horn in places you might not otherwise use it. For example, if you wanted to use the high F horn on Beethoven 7,
I forgot to turn on the instrument. Sorry about that. And it makes it very, very easy to play Beethoven 7 up there because you have the security of the high F horn and a little bit more of the weight in the sound that you would want on Beethoven 7. While if you play Beethoven 7 on a descant horn, It's a little spread. I'm gonna play that again because I noticed the mic topping out, but I just wanna make sure I get a good take of the Beethoven 7 on the Descant horn for you guys to hear. So we get a little bit of that heavier sound on the triple, which makes it more of a, a rounded horn. So why would you use a double and a descant over a triple? Because the double descant combination is going to cost you more. It's going to be more weight to carry you know, when you could just do it all in a triple. The thing is, is uh, regardless of the claims of many manufacturers, I've found that basically every triple does make sacrifices in the low register. The low register on a double is just going to sound better most of the time than the low register on a triple horn. Now, if you're already like you only take principal auditions and you've already got a principal job in an orchestra and you know that that's all you're ever going to do, then a triple horn is a great solution. Frankly, if I was in that situation, I would probably buy a triple myself because I love triple horns. But if you're a freelancer or, and if you're auditioning, you can't stereotype yourself like that. You've got to be prepared to play high, low. You've got to be prepared to take anything or you're not going to find yourself working as much as you would like. Uh, let me demonstrate. And I've got to think of another excerpt other than Shostakovich 5 to play because the last time I played one of those in a live stream, it got, cop it got content ID and copyright claimed. So. So to be clear, the difference in the low register is not about the notes up not existing on one horn or the other. If you can play low, just like the high register, you'll find that you can play low on almost any horn. But you'll notice the triple had a very close quality, 
almost nasally. And frankly, this auto triple has one of the better low F horns that I've seen on triples. While the low register on the double just opened up, it was wider. And from a player's perspective, it was just easier to play low on the double than on the triple horn. So that's why you would go with the double triple com the double descant combination over using a triple horn. Uh, I personally I do use the double descant horn combination. The next thing you have to decide is which mouthpiece are you going to use. If you do the double descant horn combination, because you'll find that descant horns because of the F alto horn will tend to perform better on shallower mouthpieces that have smaller bores than your standard double mouthpiece. Now I use a mouthpiece with a number 17 bore already. So my general mouthpiece has a smaller bore, but it's also got a medium deep cup, which isn't great for a descant horn. I do use the same mouthpiece when switching between the horns because I found in an audition situation, I don't like changing what's on my lips. But you don't have to do that. So for example, I have an Engelbert Schmidt number, what number? Uh, Engelbert Schmidt number seven here, which has a much smaller board in my mouthpiece and a much shallower and we can see the difference here. Yeah. And this is the Schmidt mouthpiece. Oops, I'm not doing good at switching mics today. I think I played that all on my vocal mic, so it sounded like a mess. Let's do the comparison again. I'll start off on the Schmid mouthpiece with the Descant cup, and then I'll go back to my normal mouthpiece to see so we can hear the difference. So we can see that the Descant mouthpiece was definitely brighter, you know, a bit had a bit more of a clarion quality, um, while the double mouthpiece was a bit rounder. Um, for me, it, it just works better rather than switching between the two, especially considering that if you do use a Descant mouthpiece with a different bore, you're also 
going to have to change your blow even more than you already have to when switching horns. And this would be another advantage to the triple horn is that you learn how to use all three horns of the triple horn as a single unit. When you're swapping between double and descant, you really have to understand that the descant takes a very different airstream than the double. And I've seen this a lot of times when people come in to try descant horns. Sometimes you can tell people are coming in to try a descant horn to make it easier for them to hit high notes. And then they sit and play in a descant horn and they put too much air into it. And if you use the same amount of air on a descant horn that you use on a double, it's gonna sound like a mess. I'll demonstrate. I'll play the Bach, one phrase of the Bach on the double, and I'm gonna use a descant horn and I'm gonna use the same amount of air. And you'll be able to see that it is pretty terrible. So as you can see, that does not sound good at all. So you have to learn, if you're going to do this, you have to really learn how to play desk hand horn. And that takes time. Sometimes I've had people ask me two weeks before an audition, like, do we have any desk hand horns at the shop that we can rent out to you, you know, that we can rent out because they're preparing for an audition? And I always tell them the same thing. Like, yes, yes, if you look on our rental page, we do have we do have a desk can available that we can rent out, maybe. Um, but it's not going to do you any good. You really have to learn how to play a desk can before you can just pick up and play a desk can. Or it's going to throw you off more than you know. And in that case, it's better to just use the double. Because although I've been talking about triple horns and descant horns for high auditions, you can very easily win a high audition coming in with just a double horn. Because of what I said at the beginning of the live stream, those horns don't help you to play high. If you can play high, you can play high. A descant horn may help give you a stylistic advantage or allow you to express yourself better in, in a more appropriate style, but it's not the end-all be-all, and you can definitely get by on just the double horn. Let me see if there are any questions here. I know this is one of the more obscure topics that I've talked about because it doesn't apply to most horn players out there, but yeah, I don't see much in chat. So I think I'll go ahead and wrap up the stream. Before I go, I wanted to show you just quickly just a couple of new products that we've gotten at the shop. So first off is that we have started to sell bags of Spain cases. I personally think these things are beautiful. We bought them in a variety of colors. Um, and and they're a cheaper alternative to the Marcus Bona cases. Now you get what you pay for. I'm not gonna say that these are just as nice as Marcus Bona, but they are very nice cases, especially for the money. And if Marcus Bona is not your style or, you know, I use this Wiseman case sitting here. If Wiseman is not your style or you don't have the money for it, this is a great, great alternative. It fits most of the horns we've tried in the shop. 
So far, the only horn that we've tried that it, it didn't fit was the Hans Hoyer G10. But we were able to get a Finko Westphalia in here just fine. Um, our Varus horn fit in here just fine. I tried my Metlin horn in this case, and it worked just fine. Um, so it fits a wide variety of cases. Oh, sorry, it fits a wide variety of horns. And yeah, it's just a nice case. Another case I wanted to show you is this fixed bell case. And I don't think I've ever seen a slimmer fixed bell case before. Again, it comes in lots of nice bright colors. It's available for a, a very affordable price. And so far, it's fit every horn that I've tried. Now, we have just got these in yesterday, so I haven't been able to try every horn. But I can tell you that it, it does fit my Metlin horn. I'll show you right here. And it is a little bit of a bigger Geyer style horn. So you can see it fits right in just nicely. With both the fixed bell and the screw bell case, you're going to want to tie it down pretty tight. And it doesn't close all the way, but it's made like that. You're supposed, it's got a lot of padding. So you just go ahead and zip it on up. And there you go. A very slim, very compact fixed bell case. I'm a pretty big fan. And then finally, the last thing I'd like to show you is a product from Marcus Bana. And this is one, this is a more obscure product. No one's exactly been bursting down the doors for this, but I kind of think they should. This is the Marcus Bona briefcase. Well, this is not the briefcase. This is the bag um, for sh sheet music and laptop. Now, you might just say, well, it's just a briefcase. You know, I can go to any store, any Walmart and get one of these. Why should I buy this Marcus Bona case? And here's why. It's the only slim and small bag that I've seen that will easily fit an orchestral folder. So a big orchestral folder, I don't need to have it sticking out of a bag and possibly getting wet if I'm walking in the rain or just looking bad sticking out of a bag. I, I've never been a fan of that look. You just put the folder in there and it fits perfectly. And though you may not be able to tell on camera, but this is a pretty big folder. This is actually a little bit bigger than, than most music folders. So yeah, this is the Marcus Bona bag for sheet music and laptop. Uh, this is also available at HoutonHorns.com along with the brass, with the two French horn cases, the bags cases, along with the Engelbert Schmidt double that I played. Um, that goes for about $11,000. The Adidas Auto Triple, which goes for about $17,000. And the um, Pax, used Paxman 40M, which is um, $48.95. Thank you for joining me. I'll check chat one more time. Yeah, and I will see you next week. Bye, everyone.